on everybody welcome back to another video so today we're in the garage with the Trans Am because it is making um, a bit of a noise so I uh, drove this thing down to the garage the other day everything was fine I was kind of sitting for a few weeks started up no problem battery was fine um, and I went to leave started it up and it sounded like it made a thump or something like the starter kicked back or some weird shit happened and basically it's doing that now. So one of two things happened, I think. Either the Bendix gear and the starter didn't retract and it's just sitting against the flywheel or possibly one of the bolts on the starter snapped off. Now the starter kind of just turned itself into the flywheel. All right, so I spared you guys the footage of me removing the uh, torque converter cover and just letting this thing sit here for maybe a minute. It actually dripped oil onto the floor. So uh, the Trans Am here might have a little bit of an oil leak, just maybe a little bit. But coming over to the starter, you can see I actually did replace it because the other one, um, when I was having problems with the carburetor, it kind of started to kick the bucket. So I ended up just popping the new one in, it was only 60 bucks. And I did shim it and it has been fine. But if we look in here, you can see Luckily, a bolt isn't broken, but the gear on the starter there, it's just rubbing on the, uh, the flex plate. So all I'm gonna do, um, I think I have some shims left from the starter. I'm just gonna shim it down a little bit to open that gap up, and that should fix our problem. Let's see what we got in here. I have shims in there. Oh man, they'll wow, there's still water in here. T top seals. Video's coming, I promise. Oh my god. Oh, I think they're in that bag. Alright, so I have quite a bit to choose from here. I think I'm just gonna pull out the uh, one that's in there and replace it with one of these thicker ones. This gear is still a little sticky. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem like it wants to retract. Damn. All right, I'm gonna loosen the bracket in the back. I'm just gonna throw up some shims in it, tighten it. Hopefully it's fixed. Otherwise I gotta pull this damn thing out and get a warranty. Yeah. Oh, here goes something. I'm gonna leave you guys underneath so the sound will be extra annoying if it's still there. Yeah, that thing just isn't retracting. Duralast shit. Duralast. The shit don't last, it's gonna fuck your ass. I can already hear the incoming comments. That's what you get when you use cheap parts. Cheap, made in China, sweatshop, parts from AutoZone. Well, from what I hear, Apple has sweatshops as well. And my iPhone never gave me a problem. Okay, here's the tricky part. Oh. Oh. Alright. Off to AutoZone, and I'm back. Replacement starter. They had to order it, so it's actually the next day. So I'm pulling that shim back out because it still sounds a little weird. And I did find the little pin spacer thing that you're supposed to use to measure the clearance between the gear. Not gonna lie, I had to look it up. I've never done this before. I usually just throw them in. If it sounds good, I leave it. Uh, but I found an Eric the Car Guy video. And this little guy here that the first starter didn't come with actually slides in between. And right now, the gap is just massive. So I'm gonna put a thinner shim in, um, get to the right 
spacing, clearance, and we'll try it again. Hopefully the damn car will start too. That seems to be another problem now. spacer in there is rubbing on the flywheel now um oh here come the fumes <coughs> okay the only thing i can do is i have to open up the gap a little more so that spacer doesn't rub which is absolutely ridiculous but i don't see any other way around it <sighs> all right so we definitely have enough space to clear that little lip there that's the problem i was having that was rubbing on the flywheel the actual gear spacing is pretty massive i mean the pin fits in there but you can see has quite a bit of movement definitely should be a little bit tighter but this is the only way i'm gonna get this to work oh this thing is freaking gross Well, you can probably tell she's running a little bit quieter than before. And start back up, start doesn't stick. So my work here is done, at least for today. Uh, but my main purpose of this video wasn't just to throw a starter in here. I wanna give you guys the entire rundown with my plans for this Trans Am. So right off the bat, my plans for this car are gonna be different from the Camaro. We're still going to be doing a hell of a lot of modification. As um, all you guys who've been here from the beginning know, this car is completely stock. Um, Suspension-wise, brake-wise, even tire-wise. Nothing on this thing has been modified. The interior is falling apart. The suspension needs work. It's slow as dirt. Um, completely stock exhaust. Still has like a factory 80-style cat on it. Basically, my end goal for this car is going to be a daily drivable weekend track um, sleeper street car. That's pretty much what I'm going for with this. Obviously with the Camaro, I went all out with the paint. Um, I'm kind of more into drag racing with it now, the wider tires, the Brembo brakes, uh, the blower obviously. I did a lot of stuff and we're going to be doing a hell of a lot of stuff to this car, but I'm going to be trying to hide it a lot more than I did with the Camaro. Um, starting on the interior, it's an absolute shithole. You guys saw previously, uh, a little earlier in the video, the T-tops are leaking, there's water in here, it smells terrible. There's no radio, there's just wires exposed, the carpet's faded, the seats are ripped, the headliner's missing. The dashboard is actually in beautiful condition, but everything else is pretty much falling apart. The center console is absolute trash. A viewer actually sent me a nicer center console that we're going to be installing in this thing. I have a replacement radio pod. Um, the seats, I would love to get them reupholstered, but we're just going to be throwing 4th gen seats in there. The quickest, easiest, cheapest way um, to get this interior looking good. Where we're going to throw in some new carpet, new radio, I got a replacement steering wheel. Everything else is going to pretty much stay 100% the same. Carpet color, interior color, I'm not doing a black conversion. Um, headliner staying gray. You know, in a way I'm trying to keep it original, even though a lot of mechanical stuff's gonna get changed, but I had no desire to actually do black interior. I have it on the Camaro. This one, I kinda just want to go with the gray. Before the interior can get done, needs the T-top seals. The main thing holding me back on that is the T-top crossbar. That is just rotted out. 
and I got a replacement and then it turns out when I went to go sandblast it, it's actually not in as uh, great a condition as I thought. So I gotta see if I wanna salvage that or buy a new one. So uh, before we get to the interior, yeah, all the seals have to be replaced. It's gonna need door bushings. The hinges on the driver's side are totally screwed. They're rubbing on the ground effect. Kind of a problem with these cars. We'll eventually get to it. Uh, moving outside the car, visually, the paint, I'm not too worried about. Um, the car is overall relatively straight. The biggest damage is the passenger front fender where it has that huge dent in it where the previous owner said a deer ran into it. If it wasn't for that, the car would be pretty much uh, straight. just need like a respray. It doesn't really have too much damage um, aside from little minor dings and stuff. The bumpers are in relatively good condition. Suspension. Um, springs, I'm probably leaving the same. I do not want to go the route of the Camaro and drop this thing down. As for the shocks, we're going to be going with full adjustables. Um, we have that new tubular cross member that's going to be going in the front eventually that a viewer sent me. Thank you again um, for that. We have the A-arms, the bushings. I'm going to inspect them. If they're in good condition, we're just going to leave them alone, change what needs to be replaced. Main things we're going to be doing are shocks, probably front and rear sway bar bushings, and links. Going on to the brakes. Um, New brakes all around. You guys remember we did the drums a few episodes back. Those are going away. We're doing a disc conversion in the back. The front, they're getting replaced as well. But in order to uh, change them, we're gonna have to go to a bigger wheel. I already have that figured out. We're gonna go to a wider tire. At the same time, still retaining the factory look. That's gonna be the main goal for this. I want this thing to be a friggin' rocket, but I want it to look like it just rolled out of the friggin' assembly line in 86. If not the assembly line rolled out of a it's friggin' junkyard um, in 2020. You know, I don't want this thing to be super nice looking, um, shiny, fast looking like the Camaro. I'm totally like, I'm going all out on this sleeper thing. You guys are gonna see. Drivetrain, I saved the best for last here. Um, we're keeping the automatic. Transmission wise, we're either going with a built 4L60E or a 4L80E. My reason behind the 60E is just because I'm really familiar with that transmission now and I could probably build it um, to hold some good power but at the same time 80 es are relatively cheap if I just get a core and I could just throw it in there the way it is and um, not have to worry about even the build transmission failing. So I'm really leaning towards an 80E at this point so that's kind of where I'm going with the transmission but yeah this car is staying automatic. Engine I mentioned this before, this car is going to be getting the Camaro's old 5.3. We're going to throw some rods in it, uh, maybe some pistons, fix it, put it in here, and boost it. As for what we're going to do for boost, this thing is definitely going to be getting a turbo. Main reason for that, um, I do love the blower on the Camaro, but the hood. I want to keep the stock hood, once again coming back to the sleeper thing and it seems like the turbo is gonna be the easier way to do that. Another thing we're gonna be doing is keeping the air conditioning, of course. Um, I'm not going through all this work, uh, trying to keep it a sleeper, and then we're not gonna have air conditioning. But for now, um, those are my plans for the Trans Am. Leave some comments below, let me know what you guys think about this. I'm pretty excited for it, because um, having the Camaro as modified as it is, it's gonna be nice having, first of all, an automatic car, something more streetable, more comfortable, better riding, but at the same time, just making tons of power, um, looking the part of an 86 Trans Am. Doesn't really have much done to it, but at the same time, um, just being an absolute monster. But for now, that is gonna do it for this video in the Trans Am series. I hope you guys are excited uh, about this build as I am. If you're new to the channel and you wanna go check out some other videos on this thing, click the playlist on the screen. But for now, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.